Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today is the third of three videos, so if you haven't watched the first two, it may be worth your time. But if you're just here for JavaScript, then you're in the right place, because that's what we're going to work on today. We've been building out this full uh, responsive site that's a single page, but it's got a couple cool features. You've got this little button that'll jump, and you can click and jump to this section here. We've got this cool animation we set up last time in the CSS. And uh, then the thing we're going to work on today is the JavaScript that allows you to come in here and search for like sandwich or something. And you see it just pulls those up automatically and hides everything else. You could come in here and say beef, all right? And you get all the beef things or like healthy or whatever. And you get all the healthy things. You can set this up with simple vanilla JavaScript and that's what we're going to do today. All right, let's jump right in. Again, if you want help with how the HTML or the CSS is set up, check out those last videos. But today we're going to work on both that search filter and this little nav bar so that it'll change uh, colors as we scroll. Let's start first of all with that nav bar. We're just going to write an intersection observer. Now I did a series of videos on intersection observers. So if you have questions about them, I'll go ahead and try to remember to add a card or something like that so you can access those. We have linked this up in the HTML. Let's go ahead and pull up the inspector tool so that we get access to the console. And then we're going to come over here and grab a few things to start with. The very first thing we want to grab is the actual header. That's our hero tag. So we're going to say query selector here, and we're grabbing our hero tag. Next, we're going to grab our main navigation. We called that main nav, so let's call it that again here. And it Again, the class is just main nav. Now we're going to use those when we write our intersection observer. Let's come down here and say const nav observer. All right, nav OBS. That'll work. All right, new intersection observer. And it takes two things. It takes a callback. And we'll just call this uh, nav, nav OBS callback. And then it takes nav OBS options. And you can name those whatever you want, but that's what I'll name it. Now I'm going to come up here and let's write both of those. I'll just write them as arrow functions here, that nav OBS callback. And right now we're just going to say you being watched. All right, so that when we call the intersection observer, uh, we'll figure that out. Now it's yelling at me already because I didn't do this nav options. So we'll say const nav options. And for right now, we're just going to set this to an empty object. We need to actually call this nav OBS down here. So let's say nav OBS dot observe, and we got to tell it what to observe. We're going to run all of our stuff off of this header itself, the actual hero image. So let's say header. That's what we want it to run it off of. Now, as soon as I save, you'll see it says you being watched. Now, what it's doing here is as it is on the page, it's telling us it's watching it. And as soon as it leaves the page, I'm going to be watched again. As soon as I come back on, it'll say I'm being watched again. Let's go ahead and grab some stuff to figure out kind of what's going on here. So this E, this event, is going to give us the first thing we're getting. And you only get one thing when you write an intersection observer. So if I refresh here, let's go ahead and grab the first thing as it comes in here. As I refresh, you'll notice that I get this intersection observer entry. And it's got a bunch of cool stuff in it. The thing that interests us is this is intersecting. Right now it says true because it's on the page even just a little bit. If I pull off, are going to get another one. And if I were to look at this one, and I scroll down and look inside the zero index here, I'm getting false. It is not in intersecting. Let's come back in here then, and let's make sure we're always grabbing the, the zero index. And then we'll just ask if it's intersecting. So if we refresh the page, it says false. It's not. I scroll up, you can see it. It says true. Scroll off, and it says false. So we can use that to set this class up this way. Now we could do an if statement, but let's just do a quick little ternary here. And we'll say if it's not intersecting the page, then we want to do something. We want to grab our name, main nav, and we want to add a class to it. So we'll say add, and the class that we added in our CSS was apply background. Now I saved it, and so I'm getting an error because you actually need to add what happens if it's false. And let's make this a little easier to read. So this is the check we're doing. This is what happens if it's true. And now if it's false, let's go ahead and we're going to just change this to remove. So now if it is intersecting, it won't be on. And as soon as we aren't intersecting, now it pulls up. 
Now, we're actually asking when it totally leaves the page. This is where the nav options come into play. There's an option we can add called threshold. This option basically says how much of it has to be off the page or on the page for you to consider it uh, intersecting or not. We'll say 0.9, which means only that amount has to be off the page for it to be considered no longer intersecting. So that 0.1 is all. So as soon as we get down at all here, really just 0.1 of this image, a tenth of this hero area has to leave the page and then it will trigger on. All right, so that's all we're going to do for the intersection observer. And now for the fun stuff, this uh, filter. Believe it or not, the filter is actually a lot easier to set up than the intersection observer. The first thing we need to grab is our actual uh, input field here. If we jump over this way, we'll notice that we gave it an ID of blog search. So let's come in here and say const. We'll say blog search equals document.query selector. And I think that was an ID of blog search. Next, we're going to write a key up event listener on that. So add event listener key up. And we're going to run a function whenever we do that called filter posts. Let's come down here and we're going to write that function filter posts. Now here's what we want to do. We want to actually get, first of all, the filter value. So let's say let filter value. In other words, the value of whatever this input field is over this way. So as they're typing, we want to figure out what that is. So blog search dot value. And then let's go ahead and just make sure that we're not having to worry about uppercase and lowercase. So we'll just say to lowercase. And that's a method that lives uh, on uh, a lot of things. <laughs> so we'll come in here. And now let's go ahead and console log this. And you'll see as we type here, if we say like A, B, C, D, it's actually each time our key is going up, it's running this function and giving us what's ever in the input field. Now, all we have to do is check that against anything that's in these cards. So what we can do is come in here and say const, let's find the posts themselves. And we're going to say document.querySelector all. And we're looking for the card. That's an article with the class of card on it. And we're going to run a little node loop uh, or list on this node loop. We're going to say for each of these posts, we want to simply say post.inner text. And again, to make sure we're not running into anything odd here, let's just lowercase everything. So we're comparing lowercase to lowercase. And we don't have to worry about checking uh, to make sure things are the same case. Let's console log this and just see what this looks like. So if I come in here, every time I key up, I'm going to get a list and you'll see it's a list of literally every single post and all the inner text in it. So the description, the title, the link tags, it'll grab it all and kind of group them together here. And now we can run this little check on this using uh, another ternary. We're gonna use the same kind of feature that we did for the intersection observer we could do this as an if statement too, but it's simple enough to do it this way. We're going to say we want the index of, and the index we're chasing or checking against is that filter value. Now this might be confusing, so let's go ahead and console log it again. And now when we type, if we type A, it's giving us a value of how many things match A. So if I type another letter, it's now saying that some of them don't match D, all right? Pretty much at this point, nothing matches. Negative one means there is no match there. So whenever we get a negative one, it's telling us that there's not a match for what we're looking for. So we can use that as a check. So we'll come in here and we're going to say post. And what we're checking for is if it is greater than negative one. In other words, if there's some match between what's in this input field and some text in a card. If that's the case, then we're going to grab the current post that we're looping through, and we're going to set the style dot display to nothing. All right, so just keep it as it is. Otherwise, and let's add a colon here for the ternary post dot style dot display is equal to display none. In other words, we're hiding it. And I see I forgot to remove one of those uh, parentheses from the console log earlier. And then we've got this bracket in the wrong place. And we forgot our parentheses. Man, I messed that whole thing up quite a bit. All right, so let's uh, actually kind of make this a little easier to read. 
Let's zoom out just a touch. This is what happens if it's true. And this is what happens if it's false. So now let's come up here and we're just going to type in hot. All right. And hot dog is the only one that shows. If we come up here and we type in beef, then only beef show. If we come in here and we type sandwich, then we only get sandwiches that show. And finally, we come in here and we type blueberry, and we get anything with blueberries. And you'll see we have this description that says blueberry waffles, blueberry waffles, blueberry waffles, blueberry waffles, even though none of them have blueberries except for these top two. But you get the point. It's searching all the inner text anywhere in the card and returning anything that has some kind of match, something greater than negative one. This kind of live filtering is pretty amazing that you can do it with so little JavaScript. If you like this kind of thing, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe. Leave a comment with what you'd like me to do next. And I hope this was a big help to you. Happy coding.